Welcome to LimeOhio.com. I'm David Trinko here with Heather Rutz. It is the end of election night 2012 and we've got quite a bit of uh, area to cover tonight. Uh, Heather, let, let's start talking a little bit about the uh, President of the United States and how Ohio figured into all that. Sure. Um, well, I, it's it's been very close and was getting closer all through the, through the night, but uh, it, it appears that President Barack Obama is going to win Ohio and with that win re-election. Um, at the moment he is leading the state with about just shy of 50 percent of the vote actually to, to Governor Romney's a little more than 48 percent. So um, it looks like he's going to eke out a victory here in, uh, in Ohio and um, that's with about 92 percent of the votes, uh, 92 percent of the precincts reporting. So we're pretty close to a, to a solid number there. Now, uh, our area of the state is uh, notably conservative. As you were talking to voters uh, today, what did you hear from them that they were looking for in their presidential candidate? Um, I, you know, it is, it, it, it is interesting. First of all, uh, the president won far fewer votes this time around uh, than, than he did four years ago. He won about uh, 5,000 fewer votes in, in Allen County than, than, than he did uh, previously. Um, so uh, you know, there's there's that. So it'll, it'll be interesting to, to look at, um, uh, you know, what what good that visit to Lima did did last week. Now, obviously, he won Ohio, and so you know, the rest is history. But um, I, you know, uh, folks around here, uh, e even people who were supporting Romney, said that they were doing so um, really because that 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 was the best candidate that that came close to to their ideals and and what they wanted to see in a candidate. He, he wasn't their first pick, but they were they were you know happy to support him o over the president because of many of the decisions that the president has made the past few years, starting with health care reform and um, you know some of the other uh, you know large uh, stimulus programs, things like that. So um, you know obviously uh, a pretty Republican region that definitely uh, voted for Governor Romney this time around. All right, well, uh, they'll have uh, four years of a Democrat president once again to, uh, to voice their displeasure, and I'm sure we'll get our share of it here on LimeOhio.com and in the Lime News. Uh, sticking with Allen County, since you uh, brought it up, and speaking of Republicans, a pair of Republicans get seats as uh, Allen County Commissioners, Corey Noonan defeating Connie Miller and uh, Don Kissick in his race for one seat, and JBEG defeating, well, nobody. Uh, he was unopposed in his quest. Uh, two new commissioners coming onto the board, replacing uh, Sam Bassett and Dan Reif in that race. Uh, also worth noting, Fort Shawnee, been a heavily talked about issue, whether or not they fold up the tents in Fort Shawnee. Uh, that is what the voters have asked for. They've asked to dissolve the village and uh, also failed on a levy to raise more money to pay for village operations. So it looks like Port Shawnee will be no more, and we'll see how that whole process comes along. Uh, School-wise here in Allen County, the Lima schools pass a levy attempt. The Lima schools, not so fortunate in that regard, and the Apollo building levy, attempting to uh, expand the campus, do some renovations, fails there. Shawnee Spencerville schools also approving their levy attempts. Now as we bounce back up to the federal level, let's uh, talk a little bit about a heavily contested U.S. Senate race and a not so heavily contested uh, set of House races. Well, uh, first of all, uh, U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown did win re-election tonight with, uh, at, at this point, close to 50 percent of the vote. Uh, besting a Republican challenger, Ohio Treasurer Josh Mandel, um, with about 45% of the vote. Um, uh, this one actually got called fairly early, and uh, uh, the polls were all over the place, uh, with some showing um, uh, Senator Brown winning by a very large margin, and, and some other polls showing a, a much tighter race. But uh, in the end, Ohio went with the incumbent, and uh, um, he'll have a, another six years on the job there. And interesting to note, Ohio has decided to split up its uh, Republican Democrats as far as the Senate goes. 
Rob Portman, a, a staunch Republican. So that just shows how uh, how split we are here in Ohio. And then, uh, you know, keeping with uh, some of the other federal offices, um, the, the, the area um, House of Representatives seats all went to, to Republicans. Uh, U.S. Representative Jim Jordan and U.S. Representative Bob Latta uh, both uh, retained uh, their seats uh, with, with challenges. Both of them ended up winning oh, about 57, 58 percent of the vote in those two districts. Um, and uh, even, even after uh, the, 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 for, the fourth district especially was, was um, redesigned with, with some of the redistricting, um, Congressman Jordan's district snakes all the way up close to close to Cleveland now, but uh, but he's going to win that handily with, with close to 60 percent of the vote. Jumping back to some local races in Putnam County, uh, there will be a new sheriff there as Michael Chandler defeats incumbent uh, Jim Boitler. Uh, that a bit of a surprise to, to some folks up that way. Uh, not as much of a surprise, two incumbents in the commissioner's office maintain their seats. Travis Drewers and Vince Schrader each holding on to their seats, uh, both of those Republicans. Um, the, you know, Drewers was a part of a four-way race there, uh, managed to hold off all the competition there. And countywide, there had been a fire levy for a new ladder truck. Uh, that went down, pardon the pun, in flames. Uh, about 77% of the voters there. Uh, passed in Putnam County, the Council on Aging vote, the Health District vote, um, and uh, uh, several fire levies all over the place, aside from that ladder truck levy. Uh, jumping over to the Ohio Supreme Court race, since that's what's on your screen, uh, we have a, a local on the Supreme Court now, how, how's that going to be come January? Uh, well, it appears that uh, uh, Lima's Bob Cup will not be returning to the Ohio Supreme Court with 93% of the precincts counted. Um, he is losing at the moment to uh, William O'Neill, about 52% uh, to 48% at the moment. Um, there's, and there's also another interesting development here, uh, one of the other Ohio Supreme Court seats. Um, it looks like incumbent Yvette uh, McGee Brown is going to lose her seat to uh, challenger Sharon Kennedy also. Um, but it does look like uh, the incumbent Terrence O'Donnell will, will uh, keep his seat against a challenge from Michael Skindell. Moving on to Auglaize and Hardin County races. Auglaize County, fr quite frankly, not a lot of contested things on the ballot. Uh, one that apparently was very hotly contested, uh, Uniopolis, much like Fort Shawnee, was talking about uh, disincorporating. Uh, that is issue to disincorporate fails by exactly one vote, so Uniopolis will remain for the time being. Uh, beyond that, uh, not a whole lot of uh, great interest to report there. And when you're in Hardin County, uh, two contested commissioner races there. Randall Rogers and Ed Elliott both uh, win there, and a uh, new income tax levy in Kenton fails. Uh, moving on to sort of the Ohio House and Senate races, uh, what do we have cooking in those? Um, well, in, in the Ohio <coughs> Senate race, um, State Senator Keith Faber easily won re-election with about 80 percent of the vote. Um, over uh, Libertarian challenger Paul Hines. And then um, also uh, Republicans also uh, won in all of the region seats uh, here uh, very, very handily. Um, uh, State Representative Matt Huffman, which serves uh, District 4, which is all of Allen County, uh, won with about 67% of the vote, um, as did um, Representative Lynn Watchman, uh, he won re-election with about 68% of the votes in District 81. Um, and then in an, in an open seat, Tony Berkeley won uh, District 82 with about 59% uh, of the vote. Uh, Robert Sprague won in District 83 with about 67% of the vote. 
and uh, in District 84, Representative Jim Booty won with about 81 percent of the vote. It's good to be a Republican around here. Uh, talk to you a little bit about state issues. Uh, the both state issue one and state issue two go down. State issue one had been uh, calling for a constitutional convention that fails 68 percent to 31 percent. And issue two, which uh, hope to change the way the redistricting process worked here in Ohio, also fails uh, roughly 64 percent to 36 percent. So, Heather, any takeaways from election 2012? Boy, I, it's, uh, we've had some some close races here in Ohio, and uh, uh, especially statewide, um, and uh, a lot of money, but got poured in, and uh, a lot of times that money didn't exactly do what it was supposed to do. So, um, you know, for all the talk of of, of uh, money influencing elections, obviously, uh, voters at the polls still have the last and most important say. And if nothing else. Probably not going to get any more mailings. Probably not going to get any more phone calls for, oh, I don't know, until the next guy starts running for election in about three weeks. My inbox has gone silent. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us here on LimeOhio.com. Uh, we've enjoyed having you here tonight, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed watching us, sort of. Uh, so we're signing off for the night. I'm David Trenko. And I'm Heather Rutz. Thanks for joining us. Just gonna cut to the red button.